Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name is George Isted, the Solent Boat Butler, and this is a Contessa 32. I am in the middle of a fairly big refit, but I thought I'd do a special video just about how to service Blake's Seacox. <laughs> Despite looking nice and clean and shiny, these Blake Seacocks are actually about 50 years old. It's just they've had a good clean up on the outside. And uh, next, I want to give them a service. Now, ideally, you want to be doing this on your Blake Seacocks every two to three years. Some people do it every year, and particularly on uh, Seacocks that are used a lot, you might find that doing it yearly is necessary because the grease slowly does go hard and works its way out of the valve but the great thing about these valves is you can service them really really easily with just some basic tools so um, the things that you will need to do a Blake's Seacock service are a spanner some grease probably or possibly some valve grinding paste and some tissue just to uh, clean everything up with so um, Ideally, the spanner that you want is a Whitworth spanner. Uh, that's a really old English um, size, and I don't have one of those. I never have bothered because I use a 15 mil. Um, so a 15 mil spanner will fit normally absolutely fine. In fact, this is a special Seacock spanner that I have made. You can see it's a normal size spanner, but it's been cut in half because sometimes when you're working on Seacocks, they're in really difficult places and you need to get the spanner tucked in around um, bulkheads and what have you. So having a special Seacock spanner, which I keep with my pot of Seacock grease, just makes the job easy. So what you need to do to get started is disassemble your Seacock. Now I've already done that one and my microphone wasn't recording, so I'm now recording the one which is slightly further away. So apologies, you're a little bit further than ideal. So these will have a lock nut and that lock nut is normally located under the flange kind of here on the older style blakes on newer style blakes which have a grease nipple coming out the side there sometimes isn't space for the nut underneath so the nut can go on the top like that it doesn't matter which way round that nut goes it can be underneath or it can be on top the only thing that really matters is that it works as a lock nut so uh, when we put it back together again i'll talk about that a bit further so we take our nuts and bolts out and put them somewhere safe where they won't fall into the bilge. Guess how I know that. And uh, then we can take it apart. So in terms of anatomy, there is a top ring which you can take off on these larger ones. On the smaller size, you can't take that ring off. Uh, and this is what kind of holds the cone um, together and the valve together so I'm going to put that to one side and there is the valve cone and that is what I call the valve body now when you take your valves apart you might find that this surface here is a bit rough or it might be ever so slightly pink perhaps um, now all you need to do is get yourself some valve grinding paste and apologies I'm repositioning myself because this is really quite uncomfortable in this engine bay um, this is the valve grinding paste that i use uh, it has a, a fine end and a coarse end on this little pot generally speaking you will only need to use the fine um, valve grinding paste and uh, these are all clean inside so normally at this stage you'd get some tissue and clean out all the old hardened grease and muck that's in there you then get some valve grinding paste Put some on the finger of choice and then apply that to the cone and uh, it's worth putting it on fairly evenly around if you can try and get some on that very end bit there if you can because that bit always seems to get missed when people do this chuck the cone back into the valve body and then I'm going to get some tissue just to clean my little finger. I've helpfully put just out of reach. Oh. Then you want to work your valve back and forth evenly, if possible, to get that valve grinding paste to do its job. So 
I'll do a couple of full rotations to start with just to kind of make sure the valve grinding paste is kind of evenly distributed and then give it a good wiggle. Right. Try to push the whole valve down. If you push right on the end here, the danger is you wear the opposite side of the valve uh, there and the top there because you're kind of leveraging it a little bit. So if you can, try and hold it kind of in the middle and just use the valve handle to rotate it rather than pushing down on the valve handle. And if your valves aren't too badly scored or damaged, it shouldn't need too much grinding. So I'm going to take that out, give it a little wipe off with some tissue, and then see what it looks like. Well, I should be down to nice, relatively clean metal. There we go. Now that is good enough, I think, to go back in, to be honest with you. Um, there's a tiny, tiny amount of pitting here. Um, I could keep going with the valve grinding paste, but I'm not sure there's that much to be gained, to be honest with you. All you're doing is removing material. Um, maybe I'll give it one more. One more little go. I'll give it one more go. While I'm here, I may as well do it. So, a little bit more valve grounding paste. Not putting a vast amount on. Back in the hole for you. Wipe my finger. I'll give it a bit more of a grind. I apologise if I'm in the way of the camera. But there isn't a lot of space in here. There, and that'll do. Right, I'm going to give that a clean and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. I've given the valve here and the valve body in there a really, really good clean. One of the things you need to be careful of is inside the valve body, there's two little machined slots in there and they're designed to hold. Uh, grease once it's been repacked with grease but that can also hold that um, valve grinding paste so you need to make sure you get that really really clean sometimes you just want to get a really small flat blade screwdriver and just run it down that slot just with a piece of tissue on the end of it um, just to make sure it is fully cleaned up now this is ready for reassembly so the grease I am using this is 
official Blake's Seacock Grease. You don't have to use this, um, but to be honest with you, um, if you're the average boat owner and you're doing this once every year, once every two years, something like that, buy one pot, it will probably last you the next 20 years. If you don't want to buy this, you may already have something in your locker that will do the job. If you have, for example, a traditional uh, stuffing gland, stern tube um, gland, uh, the grease that is used for that is often perfectly acceptable for um, seacocks as well. But this stuff is lovely and sticky and gooey and it's green. Um, so uh, I like it and I see no reason not to use it. So I get a bit of uh, grease and then we want to make sure we fill that little machined recess that I mentioned earlier. A little bit more grease and just kind of don't go crazy but cover all the surfaces in there with lovely green grease and then we're going to do the same to the valve cone and just cover it all in grease Again, you don't want to put absolutely tons on because it'll only end up squeezing out. You just need enough and uh, everything gets nicely lubricated. Just put a tiny bit more on, even if it means I get a bit of squeeze out. There we go. And the only other place is that cone in that you might want to put a tiny bit of grease is on the underside of the retaining ring because this runs against the top of the cone. So normally when I've got a little bit of grease on my finger, I just kind of rub that on the inside, put a tiny amount on there, and then everything kind of remains, um, everything stays kind of nice and greasy and lubricated. So I'm just gonna clean my finger. probably should be wearing gloves but I'm getting very low on gloves and I need to order some more so um, do as I say not as I do maybe on the glove thing um, next up I want to put the bolts back in so I'm just going to take the nut off the end there again I'm going to put a tiny tiny amount of grease just on the end of the bolt just to help it go in it really is a small amount Pop that in, but I'm not going to screw it all the way down yet. Get the other one. Tiny amount of grease on the end. That's, that is too much now. There we go. Pop him in there. Now, when I was cleaning these seacocks, I cleaned the thread on the, on the bolt, but I didn't clean the thread on the female part. So, and there's a little bit of dirt in there, so I'm just gonna make life easy for myself just to get it initially in. With the spanner. Get on this spanner. There we go. And we're just going to do this up until it's just touching the um, top plate. Uh, they're not normally this tight to do up, but that's my fault for not cleaning the threads inside. But hey, they're not going to rattle loose either, so you know, as a side benefit. Now, the trick is to wiggle the handle around whilst pushing gently on it. And that just works out the excess grease 
from the valve and normally I would just do these bolts up with my fingers but I am having to use the spanner just to nip them up a tiny amount just to stop that top plate from moving and if you go too far it becomes apparent because suddenly this handle is hard to move but uh, I haven't got this all the way down yet there we go that's just touching now that's just touching now and I'm just going to give it another wiggle again to work out the excess grease that top plate has not become loose so I think that is probably done up enough um, sometimes it can be a little bit of a fiddle to work out how tight you want these bolts um, but definitely uh, on the side of um, being slightly loose and slightly too tight because the grease will actually stop water coming in pretty effectively so um, you just want to do it up enough that you can turn your valves with one finger any looser than that and there's a risk that you could get a tiny little trickle of water in uh, any tighter than that well you're just making life difficult yourself for yourself when you want to turn the um, valves on and off so that is pretty good so the locking nuts can go on and uh, ideally without dropping them as I have just done I'm just going to give that a little tweak sometimes you need two spanners to do the locking nut bit I'm just going to move that handle out of the way so I can do the other side There we go. And always, after you've done your locking nuts, check it again that it hasn't gone either too loose or too tight. But that is absolutely perfect. Um, so there you go. That is how to service your Blake Seacocks. There is one very, very important thing to remember. After you've launched your boat, check your Seacocks. And uh, if you've had them all apart, there is always that risk that you haven't done them up quite tight enough and there are a tiny trickle of water may come in. It won't suddenly start gushing in. It's not like a major emergency. If you have a tiny trickle, just get your spanner, take the lock nut off, just tweak it up ever so slightly and uh, that should stop the leak. And uh, um, yeah, that's it. So um, enjoy your Blakes. They are fantastic seacocks. Um, there's a lot to be said for these old Blakes that are made from bronze. Uh, the newer Blakes, which are made from DZR, are almost as good. Um, just the materials are slightly inferior. They're uh, corrosion-resistant brass rather than bronze. Um, but either way, it's a good seacock. They're easily serviced, and uh, there's no excuse not to do it because uh, um, it is as simple as that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.